Hey everyone, it's Charlie Morgan here and I wanted to record a real quick video on how to deflect questions uh, that you might face on an initial sales call. Um, basically, the person who asks the questions on a sales call holds the power in the conversation. And the person who holds the power in the conversation is typically the person that's gonna produce the outcome that they want. Now, when you hop onto a sales call, there are outcomes that you want and outcomes the prospect wants. The outcome that you want is the close, if they're a good fit for you. Um, initially, the outcome you should want is a pure diagnosis, but that's a story for another day. Um, the outcome the prospect will want is a an option right or some sort of idea or you know prospects are sort of obsessed with the uh the notion that they can walk away from a cause with an extra option it's this sort of like safety net thing they like to sort of go around and gather shiny objects they're like birds with like you, you know you see crows and they go out and they grab like a silver spoon and bring it back to their nest and it for whatever reason it makes them feel good and that's kind of what prospects are like um, they're going to be on the call and their expectation from the call is for them to get an option that they may or may not take but just by having it it makes them feel safer and more secure in their business um, now the outcome of the call will be driven by like i said who holds the power in the conversation and like i said the person who holds the power is the person that asks the questions because questions produce um, answers and answers are basically leverage for the outcome right? So if you want to sell someone, um, it helps to have a lot of information about them and their business so you know what buttons to press and what to say. And likewise, if the prospect um, is asking you all the questions initially, um, then they have all of these little buttons to press as to why to not buy or why to think about it. And that's usually where objections can stem from. So basically, the method that I would use um, when a prospect, like you hop on a sales call and you'll explain to them, you know, you sort of set the tone of the call um, and you might be like, oh, well, you know, this call, I'll start by asking some questions and if it's a good fit, you can ask questions. That's usually how we approach the sales scenario. Um, and what you'll find is some prospects will be like, I don't want to do that. I just want to get to the point or they'll ignore your statement and they'll just ask you a question. So like, how do you fit into my business? Or so what do you do then? And you might find this is also quite common when you're halfway through your questioning and prospects will give an answer and you might leave some silence and then they might start asking you questions. And it's absolutely imperative that you do not answer these questions because if you do, um, you lose control of the call, the prospect is then in the driving seat um, and it then becomes more of a question of the prospect pulling information from you as opposed to the other way around. And like I said, the person who does that has the power. So when it comes to this, um, you want to, if someone asks you a question, you want to acknowledge it's a great question. You want to compliment them. Um, but then you want to sort of justify your reason for not answering it right now. So let's say that I was halfway through my questioning and a prospect then goes on to say, so, so what is it you do, Charlie? Tell me about what you do. And this is a perfectly normal thing for them to ask. They're just curious. Um, and what I would basically do is I'd say, John, I cannot wait to explain what I do, but we're only 50% of the way through my questions and I'm still not 100% as to whether or not I can help you. And I wouldn't feel, it would feel unethical and wrong for me to try and pitch you something without fully understanding whether or not it can truly help you. So I will get to that and I promise I will explain everything you need to know and more and I'll answer all your questions, but for now I have to keep going through this process. Nine times out of 10, they'll be, yeah, that's fine. The, the, the key here is to understand that in psychology, human beings have a uh, cognitive bias called the reason respecting tendency. And so when you want someone to do something or when you don't do something for someone, they're more likely to accept it if you give them a reason. If someone asks you a question and you just say, great question, so tell me about this. You, you, do, you completely ignore it and don't acknowledge why you're moving on. Um, they won't accept that and they'll keep digging into the question. Before you know it, you flood up their ego. It creates all sorts of issues. Um, so that's basically the framework. Uh, I wanted to share it over a quick you know, sub five minute video here because it's one that's helped me with loads and loads of sales calls. It's helped me make a lot of money and um, I'm sure it'll be useful for you as well. Uh, another way you can frame it, I was off the top of my head if someone asked me a question. to John, I'm so glad you've asked that and I cannot wait to explain it. Just got to carry on with a few more questions, but I promise I will explain all that in depth. Um, I want to make sure I properly understand your situation before I try and help you understand mine. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine, Charlie. On with the next question. Take some practice, take some doing, um, but over time you must get into this habit. The reason that we're programmed to answer questions is because of the way that we're brought up. Um, when you're a child, if a teacher or an authority figure, your parents, if they ask you a question, they expect an answer. And if you don't give them one, it's deemed as rude and inappropriate. And so we, we see a lot of people moving into the sales profession with this sort of bias in their mind and this this impulse to answer questions immediately. And it's always important to deflect. Okay, deflect until it's time to actually pitch them and then they can start asking questions. That's everything from me. Have a great day. And um, if you did like this video, hit the subscribe button, like it if you like the video and type a comment in the section below. And yeah, talk soon. Take care. Cheers.